So we just saw the nice rig for the fingers where the uh, rotation controls rotation and scale controls roll. And it would be nice to see how that's built. And to demonstrate it, I went ahead and broke the rig, but only for the left hand. So if you go over to the left hand over here, you can see that it still works for the little and middle finger. See? Those still work. But the pointer has no bones controlling it. And before we go too far, we should just make sure that we have in the view, po view properties, we'll go to the view properties, and we'll turn on relationship lines as, sh as so. View menu, view properties, and we'll make sure that's turned on. Now the reason that is, is that we'll be able to see parent-child relationships and also we'll be able to see lines for the different constraints that we set up. And for a rigor, that's very useful information. So, we'll turn on octahedron. We'll turn this layer for the moment so we can see the armature. We'll also turn on an empty layer so we can start working in it. I cleared all the bones from that layer earlier so that we can have some place to put our new rig in. And we can turn the display mode of the armature to something that's easier uh, for rigging, at least. So I'll click on octahedron here because that'll make it easier for us to see the see the root and tail of the armature while make it also easier to select the little balls on the tip and the and the root of the bone the other modes aren't quite as useful for our current purpose so now in edit mode and we'll just turn on this new layer and let's add a new chain to control the finger one bone per digit so let's go into a top view first, and let's move the view over, and let's put our cursor somewhere where we want this chain to begin. And let's check in front view and make sure the cursor's not floating in space and that it's actually in where we thought it was. Check in top view to make sure things are okay. Back to front view, and let's add the bone now. So you just spacebar add bone since you're already in edit mode in the armature. Now you notice that when you add it, the tip is selected, and so you can just grab that and just move that down. So you have your chain going, your bone going basically from the uh, knuckle over here, and it's going all the way to the pad of the finger over here. Now if you select this bone, and type control N and recalculate bone normal handles to line that bone up normally with the axis and that'll make it, uh, it, it, it not prone to twisting in a strange axis. Its axis is lined up with that of the finger. That's going to be very important later on because we want to be able to bend the finger without twisting it around. Now let's call it pointer for now. And it's really not enough because there's not enough joints in it for each of the knuckles on the finger. So we'll do W subdivide. I'll turn off the manipulators here so you can see what's going on. Right click on this bone here and subdivide it again with W. And now we'll just right click on these little balls here and move these joints so that they're located roughly in the same location as the knuckles of the finger. And you'll notice that the bones have become sort of twisted around a little bit. So let's select them again and hit Control N and recalculate the bone roll handles again so everything is lined up perfectly well. Now we'll name them. So instead of pointer, we'll call this one pointer start dot L since it's on the left hand. And instead of pointer.001, which isn't quite useful, we'll call this pointer mid.l. And we'll rename the last one to maybe to pointer tip.l. So long as you can remember the name, adding names to bones as you go along is much much easier than waiting till you're done rigging and then having to name 200 bones at once that are all called bone dot number 
So I'll turn on the layer that has the geometry bones for the hands, and we'll so we'll make this bone the child of the hand bone, so it moves with it. We'll shift, right click on the hand bone, and then hit Control P, and we'll do keep offset. If we do connected, we'll see something really bad happen. The whole chain will become connected with the hand bone. So undo that, and keep keep offset and it stays in its place while becoming a child of that bone, which is what we want. So now that we have this chain, let's go back out into pose mode, which we can do by just getting out of edit mode, hitting tab, and here we are in pose mode. And if you look at the mesh, we'll see that we already have an armature modifier on the mesh. We don't have to add a new one in this case and it has vertex group selected for the modification. So we need to paint those vertex groups for these new bones if we're going to get any effect. And you can shift left click on the mesh if you want, shift left click, and select which vertex groups are affecting that area of the mesh that the mouse is over. Or you can right click on the bone and it'll select or make ready its vertex group for painting. Now you can see in this case, I have already added these vertex groups because Mancandy was a previously rigged character, but you can still paint, and if you didn't have anything, you would have to paint weights there. You can see there are some options in the weight paint properties, which you can bring up with the N key here, like spray, wire, or X mirror, which lets the left side and the right side get painted at the same time. I'll subtract some weight here just to show how easy it is to paint. So now I right click on the bone, I hit mix, and now I can just add that weight back in. So that's sort of how you weight paint. And let's just pretend that I did that for all these fingers and I weight painted influences for them going down the length of the finger. And let's have a look at how that worked. So now I can rotate these bones and it deforms the finger. So now I have three bones to control the finger in an IK chain, and I can really pose the finger this way. Now, the downside to that is that, well, for man candy, he only has three fingers and a thumb, but that's still three bones per finger, so that's nine bones in the fingers, two bones for the thumb, that's 11 bones for the digit of each hand, times two is 22 bones to track just for animating his hands. And that's a lot if you're just trying to animate the hands alone, but it's even much more if you have to combine that with animating the rest of the character. So we'd like to be able to control the fingers with fewer bones than those whole three. And the best way to do that off the top of our head is making that whole chain an IK chain, and that way we'll have an end effector at the tip that you move around to move the tip of the finger around and influence the whole finger to curl or point towards that point. So we'll clear the rotation on those bones and let's go into edit mode and let's add that end effector by snapping the cursor, shift S, shift S, cursor to selection, and then we go into front view and I'll add a bone, spacebar add bone. And I'll move the tip down, which is selected by default, so it's easy. Let me turn off this layer with all that stuff in it so we can see what's going on more easily. And we can right click on this bone. It's right there. And so we can use it as the tip of the IK chain. I'll right click on it in pose mode, right click on the target, and hit right click on it, right click on the target, and hit Control I to active bone. And you notice this dotted line is drawn all the way to the center of the armature in this case, and that's because the IK is influencing the entire chain of bones to the root. So we can pull the whole character with his finger, which in this case is not what we want. So we can limit the IK to only work on the finger by changing the chain length here. Zero means it's unlimited. So let's change that let's change that and see the dotted line indicate how far the how far the chain 
how far the IK is going down the chain, sorry. So, so that, that point is going to be the limit, and the dotted line will show us that limit. So if I go back here and change it to 1 by clicking that little arrow, you can see the dotted line in there. Click it again, and you can see the dotted line. It's reaching that knuckle in the finger. So click it a last time, and now we have the chain length limited the way we would like it to be. So now if you click on the end effector, we can now pose the finger in IK. And now we have one bone per digit. However, it's difficult to predict when you're doing IK exactly how the finger is going to roll, especially if you're looking at the, at the um, hand from a weird angle in 3D space. And you can create sometimes bad positions for the finger just by putting that bone in slightly the wrong location. For instance, you can cause the finger to twist around or be in the wrong pose. And another thing that's interesting here is that I forgot to parent that bone to anything. So now if I rotate the hand, you'll notice the finger stays stuck trying to point at its IK target. Well, that part we can fix really quickly. We'll just select the bone in edit mode, tab for edit mode, select the hand with the shift key, and do make control P, make parent, keep offset. And that's fixed it right away. So now the hand is a unit again. Now you can leave it rigged like that. There are a lot of rigs that use little IK bones for each finger. But it's not really ideal. It was never a satisfying solution to me. So let's try to get something better. And what I found to be really intuitive is to have one bone along the length of the finger and parent the IK target to that bone. Now when you rotate that bone, the, the, the child, the IK target, will rotate with it, thus rotating the entire finger. If you scale that bone, it'll pull the IK target closer to the hand, thus rolling the finger. And um, that seems to be an easy way to animate. So we'll go into our front view again, and we'll click on the root of the chain, and we'll snap the cursor to it. Shift S, cursor to selection, and then we'll add the bone. And instead of moving and positioning it roughly, let's try to be accurate here. First of all, I'll turn on all, turn off all the extra layers, and then we'll right click on the little ball here at the tip, and we'll Shift S, cursor to selection once more. Then we'll right click on the tip of this bone, Shift S, selection to cursor. And the reason I did that is because the accuracy will cause the finger not to move at all when we go from edit mode to pose mode because it won't, will already be at the tip. Now I'll select this bone and I'll hit control N. Well, let's first let's call it pointer since that's what it is. And you notice it's rolled wrong. So control N will recalculate it. And so now we have it lined up nicely with the same axes as the chain, and we'll parent this bone to it. Shift select it, control P, and we don't really care here if we pick con connected the key offset, because it's not going to move either way, and we're never going to really be moving the child around, we're only going to be rotating the parent in pose mode. So there we have it. We did connect it this time. And let's have a look and see how that works. So rotate it, rotating the finger, scaling it, scaling the finger. Everything seems to be working okay, but it's not quite right yet. Whoops, I mean to rotate, not move, because you can get some nasty twisting in some situations as you're rotating around. And that's because the finger isn't staying entirely in plane with that bone and because the bone is rotating in multiple axes. And there's another problem. I haven't parented that bone yet. So once again, we have a finger that's sort of stuck in space. Well, we'll fix that quickly by parenting this bone to the hand, like we did earlier. Control P, key offset in edit mode. So that's fixed now. 
And let's try to do one more constraint to sort of force things to stay in plane. And then I'll show you how to modify the bone so it doesn't twist by itself. Well, so to keep things in plane, you'll see that I had these little floating bones for the other fingers. And if you look in the top layer, top view, you'll see that they're lined up in the vertical plane of each finger. And they're IK targets for the middle joint in each finger. So that middle joint tries to point to the IK target. It doesn't reach it, but it locks it into the same plane as the tip and the root of the chain. So that's kind of a handy way of keeping things lined up. And so the way we'll do it is add a bone here, parent it to our new big, big bone that controls the finger, and then we'll create an IK chain. So we'll go into edit mode. First we'll snap the cursor to that bone so that so that we we're in the plane with it already. And since we're in front view, we can move that bone around and it'll stay in the same vertical plane. Doesn't matter how big it is, I can make it a little bit smaller. Turn off manipulators, make it a little bit smaller because it just doesn't need to get in the way so much since we're never going to have to manipulate it. And then we'll make it a child of our pointer bone. We'll keep offset because we definitely don't want it to jump back to that position. Now tap. The reason it's so far away is so that when you scale the bone in, it'll still be far enough out to have an effect. Shift select this bone and we'll do Control I and we'll add an IK chain. And all sorts of strange things happen. Once again, because the chain length is wrong and we need to tweak some settings for the IK. So let's make the chain length 1 so the, chain, the, the IK doesn't go all the way down the root. And you notice it's affecting the tip, and we'll turn that off, and so the IK only affects the root, which is what we want. And now we're done with setting up that IK chain without any problems. Now the last thing, the, the last thing we might want to do is limiting the, the Y rotation for that bone so we can't twist that bone around, and we'll have it stay locked into that plane in space. So now we can move it a little bit side to side to wag the finger, and we can move it up and down. I'll put it in the same layer as the other bones that control the rest of the fingers on that hand, and we'll turn that layer on. And now we have a finger that basically works the same as the other ones. Stick mode will... And so we have a very nice and simple rig for the hand. Just minimal fuss and just about all the control that you would need and one of the nice things about it is that you don't have to do things one by one you can select multiple fingers and rotate them all together and scale them all together like that and you can rotate them again if you want and the thumb by itself and then you have made a fixed in very few steps and some other poses are possible like that too